Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Bruce Schwartz. Thanks so much for the interest and for taking the time out of your day to stop by and comment or view my videos and research. It's getting very hot here today. It's pretty early. It's already 81 degrees. I don't even think it's 11 o'clock yet. And yeah, we're going to be looking at the moon very soon. Last night I saw the moon come out. It was just a hairline moon. And hey, I got some pictures of uh, North Korea from the Under Surveillance YouTube channel. Amazing pictures. I'm just looking through the guidelines and I have a couple of videos to get up and I'll be showing you them soon. I don't know if you guys are as curious as I am, but uh, North Korea is not a country where we can usually see anything over there. And some people have the chance to go over there and take photos. Um, but taking photos of military people and schooling, etc., is very rare. So I have a few nice pictures that I'll share with you guys. I just want you guys to know that because I, I want under surveillance YouTube channel to know I appreciate it and that I'm not going to forget posting them. Um, Archimedes, Cassini Crater. This is the area we're at. And this is Plato Crater. No need for pointers. That big ass crater right there in the center with the high wall. Do you see how we can see the nice high elevated wall around Plato Crater? Which is rare because I don't usually ever see it that high. It always looks like a, you know, flat surface basically all of the time. The wall, top right, where you can see there, nice beautiful company company um, at the back there, which would be Bird Bert Crater, one of the Bert craters, I think is A, B, and C. And around the craters, we are seeing these massive column-like structured objects. The closer you get, you know, these things are really connected and some of them, if not most of them, all look uh, basically constructed. Had a few nice videos, guys, the last two videos, the UFOs, and what do you all think of those UFOs? They're not easy to see. And every time I get to show you guys one of them, I am so freaking happy to be able to have caught one. But it's looking through the footage, it's very tedious and it's very long. I spent the entire day yesterday trying to find those two UFOs, but hey, it worked. And it's not that they're not up there, it's the way we're looking at it. So I'll go, I'll go back in the same footage that I just showed you guys, and I'll slow it down and look at another crater, and lo and behold, we're finding other uh, UFOs move around. So by doing that three or four times in the photo, you could actually realize that the two or three UFOs that I found are actually in different craters and going in different directions. So there is definitely an active uh, surface up there. Hey, did you guys see Saturn beside the moon last night? You probably only noticed it while it was going down because it was out all day yesterday during the day. And when it went down, I think it was just below, um, just around, sorry, uh, the sunset. Once the sunset went down, it was not long after that that moon uh, appeared orange in the sky, just a hairline moon. We could see it and it encourages me because I know I'll be getting some moon footage up really soon. Hey, maybe tonight, the moon is not very wide. I'm telling you, it is not wide, but I love looking at the moon and following that bloody moon phase, that line of light that's giving us all the structures. And very soon I'll be making a video with all the different moon phases, all the different photos, and to see where that line of light goes to every single day on that surface of the moon. And probably we'll, we will be able to compare those with other moon phases. And I'm sorry, this is just my curiosity. I've always been very curious as to why that moon is supposed to be locked in place, but never in the same bloody place. It's all over the sky. You know, they say that, oh, well, it's locked in place by the tidal waves. Well, are the, are the oceans moving on, on Earth? Aside from when they're turning, I don't think so. They should be turning and remaining in the same place. Look at this. The Apennine Mountains. Are you looking at the construction? They're building over, through, and under the entire surface, and especially the Apennine Mountains. Archimedes Crater, where we've seen a lot of cloud cover. The cloudiest part of the moon for me so far is around Archimedes Crater. It's like I'm opening my eyes for the first time. I'm seeing changes for the first time, starting to recognize changes. Um, I'm very disturbed, but I'm more intrigued 
about the change. Look at this, Ryle. <laughs> they say it's a Ryle. Well, they should send some fire trucks there because the Ryle's on fire. Big, big ass fire at the end. And when I say big, okay, well, right here, we're looking at exactly, I may be mistaken about half a mile. We're looking at about two to three miles wide, that little fire oscillating at the end of the Ryle there beside Plato Crater. The proof is there. The surface is always changing. Why do we see a film-like looking cover, saran wrap cover over the moon? Meaning, when you look at the moon and you see the craters, they look like they're all molded together. Why? Because we're looking at cloud cover. The cloud cover or smoke over the surface is making a blanket over the surface and our cameras are picking them up. So over trees, over rivers and lakes, if they're up there, we're not going to see them, um, well, perfectly because of this cloud cover. It's over the craters. We can see it. Why so many? Now look at the shadows in Plato Crater. Just blowing my mind, the shadows. We don't see any high elevated peaks, but we see these high pointed shadows all the time. High pointy triangular shadows. Well, I guarantee you they're not all shadows. I count myself so very lucky to have the chance amongst amazing YouTube creators trying to expose exactly what's up there. We each have our own opinions. We have differences, our differences, differences in cultures, differences in opinions on what is going on. We have different information in certain areas and that is what makes us fight sometimes and we really shouldn't because everyone's, first of all, everyone's allowed their opinion, including the ones that come here telling me my work is fake. I respect every single one of you, but the ones that come here and say it's fake and don't take the time to really look into it, I just think you really should. But yeah, for you guys that don't believe in this alien crap, you must be really annoyed with people trying to post this stuff. But have you ever taken the time to see one of my videos? I'm capturing UFOs. And the ones who are capturing UFOs should be followed. That's what I'm saying. I saw Crow 777 show me an amazing freaking UFO with afterburners at the bottom of it, changing its direction and course, clear as freaking day. Okay, and that's why I believe it. When I see footage like that, it tells me, well, Crow didn't make it up, he caught it, okay? And he didn't brag about it and start making a bunch of shirts about the, the, this UFO. No, he's trying to do real research. I respect the way he's doing it, and I'm sure he respects the way others are doing their research. I mean, we, we live in a vast world, right? But what's up there? is not for nothing. This is why I'm doing it, because there are, um, it's inhabited. So long me. The moon is inhabited, it's active, it's as colorful, if not more colorful than Earth. I do not know if it has rivers or lakes. I have seen what looks like dried rivers or lakes, and I have also seen areas that look like lakes with the water in them, because we're seeing blue reflections. But again, it doesn't mean it's water. But, they just found water on Mars, they found uh greenery on mars right we're talking about growth okay how can that be so far away how can that be it doesn't make any sense if there's vegetation on mars there are palm trees on the moon i guarantee it i mean look how close the moon is to us have we ever taken consider into consideration how far is the moon from the sun and how far is Earth from the Sun? So somebody asked me, which is closer, the Moon or the Sun? Uh, sorry, the Moon or Earth, when they're going around the Sun. And I think that's an, uh, an amazing question. And I'm going to give you a, a big hand on that question, buddy. Is that it all depends. While we are being propelled with the Moon, the Moon and Earth system, around the Sun in an elliptical orbit, meaning the orbit that the sun and the moon are t uh, that the earth and moon are taking around the sun put a football shape over the sun and that's the shape we're taking like an eyeball we're going like a slingshot we're being spun past the, the sun and then we're coming back with the gravitational pull like an elliptical in an elliptical orbit now what's depending on the distance of earth or the moon depending on when we're both traveling around the sun depends on the apogee 
or perigee. That means depending on when the moon or is closest or furthest to Earth. Both Earth and the moon remain at a distance in their elliptical orbit around the sun of over 150 million kilometers away from the sun. Michelle Garcia, thank you my dear for the generous donations. Please know that you're welcome to this community. Darla Lacombe, I love you dear, thanks so much for the generous donations. Noticing these little details is what's going to expose it all. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Thanks for subscribing, everyone.